There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon in when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. And so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons. But that's another issue. We need more social workers. We need more mental health workers. We need more people who, when you're called on these scenes and someone's about to jump off a roof, is not just someone standing there with a, with a weapon. It's someone who also knows how to talk to people, talk them down. We can't expect you to do every single solitary thing that needs to be done to keep a community safe. It's time to fund community policing to protect and serve the community. It's all, I'm also calling for increased funding for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and the U.S. Marshals' offices. I'm confident that if we fund these programs, we'll see a reduction in violence. In the next year's budget, I'm also going to try to double down on this investment. I think I've got a lot of partners here in New York going to help. Mayor Adams, you say that gun violence is a sea fed by many rivers. Well, uh, you know, uh, I put forward a plan to dam up some of those streams. Uh, I'm, you know, you can count on me to be a partner in that effort. And I have the U.S. Attorney, uh, United States Attorney General here with me today. And we put together a comprehensive strategy to combat gun crime in cities like New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, and many other cities, San Francisco. First, we want to crack down on the flow of firearms used to commit violence. That includes taking on and shutting down rogue gun dealers. At, uh, and it's, it's about doing background checks, it's as well as outright selling, uh, uh, of that, making sure the people who are not allowed to have a gun don't get the gun in the first place. And again, for any of the press, any of the press listening, this doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment right. There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon in when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. And so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons. But that's another issue. And uh, look, one of the things that we focused on, the Attorney General and I, and we're getting to the point where I think we're going to be able to have a real impact on it, includes going after ghost guns. Ghost guns are the guns everyone in this room knows that can be purchased in parts, assembled at home, no serial number, and can't be traced. And they're as deadly as any other weapon out there. But the fact is, they are out there. And, you know, this spring, the Justice Department, this spring, the Justice Department will issue a final rule to regulate these so-called ghost guns. But there's more we can do. Across the country, police departments report sharp increases in the number of ghost guns found at crime scenes. That's why today the department is launching an, an intensified national ghost gun enforcement initiative to determine and deter criminals from using those weapons to cover their tracks. If you commit a crime with a ghost gun, not only are state and local prosecutors going to come after you, but expect federal charges and federal prosecution as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here. And let's go, Brandon.